Yo! What's up everyone, Bytor here. Let's start first with some good news for the community. As you guys know, the topics for the channel tend to be a bit niche, but it seems like the YouTube algorithm is recognizing the engineers from the crowd and suggesting them our content. We are at over 2000 subscribers as of the making of this video. Thank you so much for trusting us and the community to prepare you for your interviews. We are also seeing increased volume of emails asking for help with interviews. As we have mentioned in the past, we are a small team and doing the best we can to get back to you. However, we are currently giving priority to folks who already have their interviews scheduled in a first come first serve basis. Thanks to this increase in volume though, we have been able to conduct a few mock interviews with some of you. We are currently in the process of editing those interviews to release them as content. Also, we promised you a while back that we will be raffling some mock interviews with you. So in the next few weeks, we will be posting a question in our community page that we will use to raffle the mock interviews. The only thing you need to do is answer it correctly and you will be entered into the raffle. If you are not subscribed, please take a moment to do so. And if you are already a subscriber, be sure to enable the little bell icon so you can be notified of when we post the question. All right, let's jump into the question for today. The interviewer will show you the following circuit and will say the following. Assume all capacitors are initially discharged. Can you derive the voltage at V out after a cycle of Phi 1 and Phi 2? Let me pause here for a second and recommend you watch the video showing in the top right corner first. Seriously, pause this video and watch that first. Why? It has the foundations to answer this question and any questions similar to it. I'll trust that you actually watched the video I suggested, so let's try to answer the question. I don't know about you, but I always like to answer these questions by redrawing the circuits at each clock cycle. It is much easier to visualize what is going on in this way. So let's tell the interviewer the following. Let me redraw the circuit for the time period where phi1 is high. So we have the following circuit. It is clear that during this clock period, V out will stay at zero, and C1 will have a voltage drop across it of V1. Therefore, the charge on C1 is defined as Q equals C times the delta V. Nothing else happens during this phase. Let's now redraw the circuit when phi2 is high. We will have the following circuit. Now, did you remember to watch the video I recommended a few minutes ago? It'll pop up in the top right corner again, just in case. Isn't this structure the same as what the video showed? It is exactly the same, right? So, as a knowledgeable ninja, I am going to give you 10 seconds for you to pause this video and come up with the answer yourself. If your answer was C1 times Vn divided by C1 plus C2, then unfortunately you got it wrong. And you may be wondering why. Well, if both capacitors started initially discharged, then you would have been right, since the current through the capacitors has to be the same. Meaning the charge of the capacitors is the same. However, the tricky part of the question is that one of the capacitors was initially charged to some voltage. Now, it is still very much true that at the end of the cycle, the charges through the capacitor must be the same since they are in series. So at the end of the cycle, the charge at C1, which is C1 times delta V1 plus Q0 from the initial condition must be equal to the charge of C2 
that is C2 times delta V2. Using simple algebra, we can see that C1 times the delta V at V1, that is nothing more than V2 minus V out, plus C1 times V1, that is the Q0 or the initial charge, must be equal to C2 times V out. Rearranging and solving for V out, we have C1 times V2 plus C1 times V1 divided by the sum of C1 and C2. And there you have it. Notice how we built into the knowledge of one of our very first videos to solve this interview question. This is likely how an interview can evolve. First, testing your fundamental knowledge and then adding a little spin to make sure there is a deep understanding of the concepts. Interestingly enough, this question was recently asked to one of our community members for a position in analog design. Stay sharp, ninjas. See you next time. Cheers.